Hello, welcome back to Principles of Corporate Finance video lecture series. Today we are on session 3 uh, on the topic of financial statements analysis. On our session 2, we uh, generally described financial statements, talked about balance sheet, income statement and cash flow statement. Now, as a finance manager, we need to analyze these statements and make some decisions. Uh, we, uh, as a finance manager, you must have a good working knowledge of financial statements. In accounting department, we will have accounting department will prepare statements, report statements. But as a finance department in a company, we must analyze these statements and make decisions within our company. Also, finance managers make decisions about investing in new companies, in other companies, and. Uh, lending to other companies or borrowing from companies. So uh, to make the decisions we have to analyze statements and uh, have get some knowledge, more as impossible knowledge from these statements. In order to make meaningful comparisons of companies of different size, uh, financial professions use two K techniques. This is the first one is common state statements, then financial ratios. So today we'll talk about these two techniques. First, common size statements. Common size financial statements is applied when companies, let's say we have two different companies, they have different size or they report statements in different currencies. For example, we cannot easily compare Toyota company with Mercedes company, Mercedes-Benz Daimler company, even they are in the same industry because Toyota reports its financial statements in Japanese yen, whereas Mercedes Daimler uh, reports uh, statements in euros. So they are in different currencies. They have different numbers, and these numbers have different meaning because of exchange rates. So to compare, to make decisions about these two companies, we apply standardized statements. That is, we convert balance sheet and income statement or other statements into common size statement, common size balance sheet. First, we start with common size balance sheet. Common size balance sheet is, uh, that is reporting or showing all balance sheet items as a percentage of total assets. We have statements here for Prafra Corporation. It has assets divided into current assets, fixed assets. It has total assets of uh, 3.3 million dollars. So, uh, to convert these balance into a common size balance sheet, we call it standardizing. We uh, express all these assets as a percent of percentage of total assets. Here we convert, for example, cash is $84 million, in total assets is $3 billion. So we convert this number, it is 2.5% of total assets. Accounts receivable is $165 million, that is 4.9% of total assets. So we convert all balance sheet items into a percentage of total assets put here. So this is for 2016, again we do it for 2017. So uh, it makes it uh, more sensible than just uh, showing numbers. So now we can compare ba uh, balance sheet of different size companies and we can now compare uh, companies reporting their uh, financial statement in different currencies. Then we can make some decisions about these companies. And here we can easily uh, see percentage change from year to year. For example, in uh, 2017, inventory received by 0.5%. Also, we apply same procedure to liability sites and uh, equity side of balance sheet. That is, we show all uh, liabilities and uh, equities as a percentage of total assets or total asset and equity. We call this common size balance sheet. Applying same logic, same approach, also we can generate common size income statement. In common size income statement, we report all income statement item as a percentage of total sales. For example, for this company, profit company, in 2017, it has sales of 2.3 billion, it has costs of 1.3 billion, and others. So, as I said, companies may have different size or they have reported statements in different currencies. So, to compare these companies, we convert all income statement items as a percentage of total sales. Here you see it, 
sales is 100%, then cost is 58.2%, depreciation, EBIT, interest, and others. The net income is 15.7% of total sales. 5.2% of sales is paid out, 10.5% uh, is uh, retained in company for new project. This approach is common size financial statements approach. So applying this statement, we can have information about statements and make some decisions. Second method in financial analysis is the ratio analysis. That is uh, somehow more used uh, method. That is looking at financial statements, uh, hundreds of numbers there. Using these numbers, we make some ratios, we uh, apply mathematical operations and try to get some information, useful information to make decisions. So a balance sheet and income statement have many numbers, as I said. Here you see many numbers and uh, we can generate many new numbers as well. But we must make some calculations to get uh, useful information that will be helpful to make decisions. That's why we uh, categorize these ratios into four main categories. These ratios which are used to measure short-term solvency of company, we call it liquidity ratios. Other ratios to measure long-term solvency of companies, we call them financial leverage ratios, asset management ratios, profitability and market value ratios. So uh, we also can generate new ratios other than this. But these ratios cover most of the information we may need in making financial decisions. We start with uh, <coughs> liquidity ratios, short-term solvency ratios. As its name suggests, it is a liquidity ratio. Through these ratios, we try to measure liquidity of company, how it is able to pay its short-term obligations. First one and the famous one is, most famous one is current ratio that is calculated as current assets divided by current liabilities. It shows us how our current assets is able to cover our current liabilities. Total current assets, we get these numbers from financial statement of this Prafra company in 2017. We have total current assets of 708 and total <coughs> current liabilities of 457. These are million numbers. So we get 1.31 times. It, it means that company, this company is able to cover its liabilities 1.3 times. It's better to have this ratio uh, more than higher than one, but to make some uh, decision, we also we need to compare this ratio with industry average, how peer companies perform, how, what's average current uh, ratio of these companies. Also, we need to look at historical information of same company. So, uh, how our company's current ratio has developed. So, for, uh, for example, 1.3 times is for 2017, how it was last year or two years before or three years before. We need to go back as much as we can to see the dynamics, how it has changed. And industry average is very important. Uh, second ratio is quick ratio. Sometimes some finance managers think that inventory is not uh, as liquid as other assets because sometimes it takes more time to change to sell inventory and uh, convert it into cash. So that's why in quick ratio we deduct inventory, we take inventory out from current assets and divide by current liabilities. Here we get our uh, current asset is 708, our inventory is 422 and divide by 540 because 0 0.53 times. So again, we need to compare this, this coefficient with industry average. How is the position, how is the case in other companies, peer companies? And some finan uh, finance managers may uh, need to look at only cash, how our companies cash is able to uh, cover our liabilities, current liabilities. This is cash ratio. We divide cash, only cash, not receivables, not other uh, current assets in the, in the financial statement. By current liabilities, we get 0.18 times. 
Of course, that is very simple mathematical, that this ratio will be smaller than quick ratio and this will be smaller than current asset. So we, get, we calculate our liquidity ratios and as I said, we compare it with industry average to uh, make some decision and to decide uh, next steps. What will we do? Will we increase our liquidity? Will we borrow in short term or what will we do? Will we try? We may need to try to accelerate collecting our receivables or we may need to change our inventory amount and other. Second group of ratios is uh, leverage ratios. As I said at the beginning, leverage ratios measure long-term solvency of company, how it is able to pay its long-term obligations. First one is total debt ratio. That is calculated as total debt. It, is, it comes from simple balance sheet equation and divided by total assets. That is 28% from uh, our previous balance sheet. And to total asset is that much and uh, equity we get 28%. Uh, it, it means that for one dollar in total asset we have 28 cents in debt. Second ratio is debt to equity ratio. Total debt divided by total equity. Also it shows us how much debt do we have for our one dollar in equity. That is 38.5%. Uh, it means that uh, for our $100 in equity, we have $38.5 in debt. Equity multiplier is the rearrangement of this ratio, total asset divided by total equity. Total asset we can rewrite as total debt plus total equity. We get this multiplier, 1.38. Also, we have times interest earned ratio. It shows us how we have covered how we have earned for our interest uh, payments. It's calculated as EBIT divided by interest. EBIT, we know, is earned before interest and tax. For our company, it's, it's 691 divided by 141. We get 4.9 times. It means that this company is able to cover, earn its interest payment about five times. So uh, we know this EBIT has a non-cash item of depreciation, that's sales minus cox minus depreciation. And we know that this depreciation is non-cash item. We haven't really paid out this depreciation, but we have subtracted here. We add back for our cash coverage ratio, a bit, a bit plus depreciation plus amortization if we have any, divided by interest. So here it is 6.9 times. We say that this company is able to pay its interest with its cash about seven times. Next group of ratios is asset management ratios or turnover ratios. We start with inventory turnover. Inventory turnover shows us how many times in a year our company, as a company, we have turned our inventory over. We have bought new inventory, produced it and sold. How many times in a year this cycle has been repeated? So it's a calculated as cost, cost of goods sold divided by inventory. In our company, we collect this information from income statement, and this is 3.2 times. It means that throughout this year, our company has bought inventory, produced and sold 3.2 3 times in a year. So if, our, if we want to know how many days did one period take, we calculate days sales in inventory. That is 361 divided by inventory turnover. That is here we uh, divide 365 by 3.2, we get 114 days. It means that it took 114 days for one inventory period. We bought inventory, produced it and sold. Second ratio is uh, receivables ratios. Uh, first we start the receivable turnover. The receivable turnover means uh, how, how many times in a year company has sold in credit and collected it. Uh, in session one, we said that all companies have receivables and all companies have, almost all companies have payables. That is not all company uh, buys everything on cash and sells everything in cash. All companies have uh, receivables and we are interested how many times in a year we sell in credit and collect it. 
Receivers turnover uh, calculate that says divided by accounts receivable. Here we get 12.3 times. It means that 12.3 times in a year, company uh, granted credit, collected the granted credit, collected. So how many days did one period take is expressed as days sales in receivers or average collection period. 365 divided by receivers turnover, here we get 30 days. It means that our one receivable period is 30 days. One average collection period is 30 days. Again, we need to compare these ratios with industry average to see how we perform in the industry with, with peer companies. Uh, for example, for a company, uh, average collection periods, shortest period is better. We, need, we want to have as short as possible. But uh, again, uh, if we uh, shorten this uh, day, then we may lose new customers. We need to look at how our peer companies perform in this area. Uh, next ratio is total asset turnover. Uh, inventory and receivables are short-term current assets. Same logic we may apply to total assets. Uh, it's uh, calculated as sales divided by total assets. That's 0.64 times. It shows that uh, one dollar of our total assets has generated 64 cent in sales. Of course, it's better to have higher this uh, ratio. It's not unusual for total asset turnover to be less than one, especially if a firm has a large amount of fixed assets. It is normal for these companies. Uh, next group of ratios is profitability measures. Uh, as an investor or finance manager, if you want to see uh, how profitable is our company operating? We look at these ratios. We start with profit margin. Profit margin is calculated as net income divided by sales. That is what percentage of our sales total revenues is net income. That is what part of our sales is net income. Here is 15.7%. That means that 15.7% 7, .7 of our total sales is net income. Next ratio is return on asset ROA. That is uh, how much our total assets has generated net income. Here is 10.12%. Uh, so we, we compared with our peer companies and we also may want to compare with our historical performance. Next uh, ratio is return on equity. Investors uh, may want to look at how their equity has performed. That's uh, net income divided by total equity. It shows that how much our $1 tied equity has generated net income. Here is 14.01%. So of course, investor wants to have higher this ratio. And the company manager wants to have higher return on assets. Profit margin measures general profitability of company EBITDA margin pro measures operating profit of profitability of the company. That's EBITDA divided by sales. How much our sales have generated EBITDA? That's 41.8%. Next group of ratios is market value measures. Last group, uh, this is last group. That first one is market capitalization. Market capitalization shows how big is equity in terms of market value. It's calculated as stock price times number of outstanding shares. Here is $88 per share times 33 million shares outstanding, $2.9 billion. Uh, P-E ratio, famous ratio in financial markets, that's calculated as price per share divided by earnings per share. It shows how our company's price is related with its earnings. Or, in other words, how much do you need to pay to get one dollar of this company's earnings? That's eight times uh, market to book ratio, market value of per share divided by book value per share. Market to book ratio is calculated as market value of the share divided by book value of the share. So market value may differ from book value. 
because market value is formed via demand and supply in the market. Here is 1.12 times, so uh, it is unusual to have higher these ratios. Market value is not be higher than, for example, five times or six times book value. There must be, uh, it gives the investors, there is some unusual information. Enterprise value, enterprise value is, as its name suggests, that uh, that is company value uh, when you when you try to buy company um, that's market capitalization equity total value of equity plus market value of interest bearing debt total value of liability minus cash so higher is better enterprise value multiple enterprise value divided by EBITDA so uh, that's 3.6 times. Uh, it shows how, how much company's operating income has pro, pro, produced enterprise value. Here is 3.6 times. Again, we need, we need to look at how industry average uh, change. So here is a summary of ratios. Again, uh, as I said at the beginning, we can generate many ratios. We can add up numbers, uh, subtract numbers, or we can do, apply any mathematical operation. But the most important one is we need to change numbers or interpret numbers to get some information that will be useful to make some decisions. So these ratios are most used ratios that is useful making some decisions. Regardless of where you are, you may be equity holder, bond holder, new lender or supplier to company. So you may need to look at different ratios you need. As I said, financial ratios are used to make some decisions, but ratios by themselves uh, is not enough. We need to compare them. As I said, the uh, most important one is to compare with peer companies and we need to compare with our historical data. So uh, uh, in our profitability ratios, we had return on equity. I said that this is an important indicator for equity holders, investors. And the main goal of financial management is to increase firm value. That is to increase shareholders' wealth. So uh, then uh, this return on equity is important indicator. If we increase this indicator, it means that we increase wealth of shareholders. There are many approaches to, in, uh, to increase return on equity. One is DuPont identity. That is popularized by the DuPont Corporation, that was a chemical corporation. This approach seeks to in, uh, seeks the ways to uh, increase return on equity as dividing return, decomposing return on equity into sub uh, factors. So increasing these factors, uh, affecting these factors, we can increase return on equity. This uh, is operating efficiency, is indicated by profit margin, asset use efficiency, indicated with total asset turnover, we talked about these ratios, and financial leverage, equity multiplier. So how it is generated? Return equity we know is equal to net income divided by total equity. If we multiply this with one, mathematically we know nothing will change. So we can multiply these total assets by total assets. This equation is not changing mathematically, but we can rearrange this uh, denominator, we say we get return on asset times equity multiplier. So if we increase return on asset or if we are able to increase equity multiplier, it means that we can increase the return on equity. We can add one another uh, factor, also uh, multiplying this equation by one, that is sales divided by sales. Nothing will change mathematically. If we rearrange this, we get not income divided by sales times sales divided by total assets times total assets divided by total equity. This ratio is a profit margin. This ratio is total asset turnover and the last ratio is equity multiplier. So we can say that uh, decomposing return on equity into profit margin, total asset and equity multiplier we have ways, we see the ways how to increase return on equity. For example, if to, with increasing equity multiplier, 
we can increase return on equity. So equity multiple can be increased by some borrowing or total asset turnover. If we increase total asset turnover, we can increase return on equity. It can be increased with sales or uh, increasing profit margin. We can increase uh, return on equity. Profit margin can be increased with decrease in cost, cost of goods sold. We can rewrite this in this way. Also, there are many, uh, we can add new factors as well, but the product identity is famous for the three, these three indicators. For our company return on equity, 15.7% times 0.64 times 1.39, that is for about 14%. As I said, uh, ratios can be used and is widely used in financial analysis, but it has some problems. First one is there is no underlying theory, so there is no way to know which ratios are most relevant. It is up to a finance manager or an analyst to decide what, what ratio to use. And benchmarking is difficult for diversified firms. So uh, actually these benchmarks is sometimes arbitrary. We have industry average we, uh, compared with industry. Globalization and international competition makes comparisons more difficult because of difference in accounting regulation. We use accounting terms here, for example, we use sales, we use calcs. All these balance sheet items may be reported with diff under different standards, so we, we can get different numbers. Firms use varying accounting procedures, that, for example, depreciation may be uh, treated under one method in one company uh, and industry average for industry companies may use other methods as well. Extraordinary or one-time events. For example, for one year we may have higher sales but it cannot be for the repeated for coming years. So a better way is to look at previous years to have higher uh, horizon to compare and to compare with industry average. It makes useful information. That's all for session 3. I summarized financial ratios and uh, talked about common size statements. Thank you for watching.